Ready? Okay. <laughs> the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants, who will give him the produce at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produce the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Christ. Christ. Well, it was a lot, as always, um, when I was chewing on these texts this week to think about. Um, I, really, I really started to dive into thinking about the story of Paul. Paul, the first pastor. And, you know, here he, he confesses that he... His, his life story, the tapestry of his life thus far. Uh, he, he was a Pharisee. He was an avid ruler of the law or a holder of the law. He, he was there at the stoning of Stephen. But then God profoundly transformed his heart. Profoundly with that conversion experience as we know. And we hear and we talk and we say a lot about the heart. And, you know, as I've been teaching in uh, several of my messages, this, this head and heart reality of that relationship with God, developing that relationship, but then incorporating it in the whole self. And it is a lifetime's journey, and we're always stumbling. And sometimes our own lives... Our own life's story, uh, the evil one has this kind of reflecting on uh, areas of our life that were in the valley too much. Or areas in life, well, shoulda, woulda, coulda done this better. And when we think of the harvest, the final harvest of the Spirit, the Spirit of God manifest within us, to be and realize the kingdom of God. And yes, I know that that's probably a mouthful to hear and to think about, but that beautiful harvest in the soul. Yes, God is that ultimate gardener. He is that ultimate gardener. And we are, we are in some senses, uh, tenants to his kingdom until we join him completely in the spirit. What are we growing here? I think it's interesting when we hear, hear and see a lot of evil around us, we think, you know, it's kind of crazy. It, it, 
what people do to do to uh, reap to try to change the way they want things. Just like these tenants, these tenants wanted, you know, they wanted all the money. They wanted to just take the, the everybody out and just keep all the money for themselves. Uh, life doesn't work that way. <laughs> but getting back to that evil that is planted. You know, the evil one tries to sow little seeds in our hearts, too. He's like those, uh, he's that weed planter. And the Holy Spirit uh, has enough work to do, amazing work to do, within our brokenness. Our hearts are challenged vessels. And um, it's interesting speaking of the heart, the mystery of the heart. Here is this little muscle that miraculously contracts and, uh, I can't think of the other word, but it just continually is working without us saying, okay, beat every blah, blah, blah second. And it runs our, this self, it runs this fleshy self, but it also the heart has a spiritual nature and that spiritual nature God is always doing defibrillator paddles on or um, always doing some kind of open heart surgery on us but a lot of times we don't open we don't open enough and then we 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 see how fragile life is we see how fragile life is, like the harvest. Um, I remember a couple of years ago, uh, I was sharing that I was uh, sad about the local farmers in Illinois, wondering, you know, the crops all looked burnt. We still have the fires out west. And uh, a very kind lady was saying, you know, don't don't worry about that. You know, just your prayer, your thought and prayer alone has added a blessing uh, to their yield. You know, and, and, then, and that made me think about thinking about these texts again, thinking about that harvest. When we step outside of ourselves, when we turn off where we do that kind of monkey thing, but in a spiritual way, see no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil. And you saw me do the sign of the cross on that. Because, you know, we have to, we have to work with the Holy Spirit. We have to do, we have a task at hand. Paul had a task at hand with all the churches that he ministered to. I mean, when Christ was first transforming that man's amazing heart, and then, you know, Paul had to keep opening himself up. Okay, God, I'm going to let you do that surgery on me. I need you to let me change and be used for your great purpose. Purpose and mission. The invitation... The invitation of the gospel, the calling of Christ, may not seem direct because we'll, we'll have a lot of stumbling blocks and we'll forget for a moment about this beautiful, fully human, fully divine God who gave his life for us. But yes, we are to think of that cross. But again, as I said, he's not on this cross, is he? Because he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Yes, that's an Easter note. We are in the, the um, umpteenth number of discipleship school or apostleship school, however you feel yourself called, uh, of uh, Pentecost. 
the teachings of the Spirit, the teachings of God. And Christ is that cornerstone, that foundation within our brokenness. Even when we're in the muck and mire of the world and uh, we cave in, we cave into despair, we cave into uh, letting the darkness uh, bogart our heart briefly. Remember, sin, death, and the power of evil have no power because of Christ's resurrection. Christ defeated that. And what he, you know, what he's telling the Pharisees here is they want to keep doing the way, the way they're doing. They want to be all self-righteous, you know, the ego is reigning. You know, we're God's lawyers. We're God's, uh, you know, you people are beneath us. You know, they had that little pedestal going on. They had all this other stuff. That was all worldly, um, you know, garbage, like Paul saying, rubbish. They weren't really, they were not going to die for anybody spiritually and grow into new life. They don't even understand what the new nature was. Nicodemus was probably one of the first ones that was tapping into that, you know, as we understand. You know, he, he was even challenging Jesus with, you know, how can you be born again? We are born again. We die and we rise every night when we have a conscientiousness to our sins of omission and sins of commission. We're always sinning every day, okay? I mean, and now it's not a hot hellfire and brimstone note there. We always, you know, have some self-seeking jerk moments. And we have other moments where we think of love. And we think of like, you know what? I don't have any beef with someone anymore. And then we can look at even our own families. Um, hearing in our hearts, never say never. Never say never was something my dad taught me. When the world says no, God says yes. And my parents aren't really people of faith. I mean, yeah, they sent me to parochial school, etc. <laughs> and, you know, but no one knew I was going to completely change. You know, the Lord took his spiritual two by four to me uh, the moment I had my conversion experience in 2003. And then the, the, went to Curcio and then the whole thing just tumbled forward. And here I am today. And whatever the tapestry is of myself, we all have individual, we all are works of art. I still am an artist. Uh, but now I want to divest myself of self. I want God to use me. I want to reap a bountiful harvest. As we heard that beautiful... Uh, God spell song. I love that. All good gifts. There's so many gifts. There's gifts in the in the physical world around us that God gave, that we are supposed to be stewards of. But then there's also right here. The gift of my very life, the gift of my physical heart, the gift of my spiritual heart, that the Lord is holding in the palm of His hands. And even at this very moment, when I'm, I'm lightly stringing together thoughts, but I'm letting the Holy Spirit make this sermon, he's doing his work in me. He's the mortar to, that, to my soul. He is the mortar to my brokenness. He is the flowers. He is the butterflies that are leaving We must let our lives be open to God in this very here and now, in this dark time, it seems like, where all this stuff is negative. We can't be thinking of like, well, I want what I want when I want it. Uh, or 
like, well, it's too late, shoulda, woulda, coulda. My cup runneth over because of the Lord's abounding, amazing, profound, beautiful grace. We must let God in and must reap a beautiful harvest. Uh, I love, I love this letter. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing. And the sharing. If we could confess that every day in some way or another in our every days. Our world would be completely different in the harvest that we would, the world would produce, would be nothing, be completely transformed, different. Let us press on for the goal. Let us pray. Loving, gracious Lord Jesus, help us to follow in your footsteps, O Lord. There are certain things we must die to. There are many things that we must rise to that are of light, love, grace, promise, all good gifts. Help us to be not wild creatures, lawless creatures, godless, sin sinful creatures. Help us to be the new creation you truly need us to arise in. We love you and we praise you, O Christ our King. Amen.